Hi, I'm Dr. Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab. I'm going to show you how to calibrate a VMAX Encore uh, metabolic cart. This is used to do metabolic testing, uh, whether it's at rest, during exercise. Um, it, it's very useful for getting VO2 maxes. So first off, I've already turned on the system, and now it's asking us to press Control alt delete in order to get to the administrator password. So this particular system does not have administrator password, so all you have to do is hit enter. And from there, you're gonna see the Viasis screen come up. There's always gonna be this attention, this warning sign that comes up. You can just exit out of that. All right, so what we're gonna to need to do now is open this top um, icon, the VMAX uh, software. All right, so at this point, we can go ahead and turn on the fans within this part of the metabolic cart. So there's two switches here that we need to turn on. So we'll go ahead and hit the first one first. So that's this power switch. And after that, we can turn on the fan itself, which is the second switch. All right, so once these are on, we need to wait for at least uh, 20 to 30 minutes before we actually try to calibrate the cart. Okay, so now that this system is warmed up for a full 30 minutes, it's actually been longer than that, more like 45 in this situation. Um, we now need to do the calibration of the flow. So the flow should be what you do first, not the gas calibration. All right, so there's two parts to this, gas and flow. All right, so in order to do the flow calibration, we're gonna come in here, we're going to click on flow sensor calibration, and you're gonna see a new dialog come up here. Before we can actually do the flow calibration, we need to tell the system um, what the ambient room is like. So we need to tell it the humidity, we need to tell it the temperature, and we need to tell it the barometric pressure. All right, so the reason why we're doing the flow calibration first is because in this particular system, the flow calibration is where you have controls over those three. We're gonna click on setup. And from the setup window, we can see the different uh, parameters I was just talking about. So I've already set two of these. I've already done the temperature and the barometric pressure, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in the humidity now so you can see how to do it. It's the same for all of those. All right, so you're gonna need a device, something similar to this little device here that will give you um, the ambient room temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure on it. So we're gonna come in here, we're going to click whatever cell that we are trying to change. So in this case, I'm gonna click in the relative humidity cell because that's what I'm trying to change. And I'm gonna come down here. And so if we take the, the mouse cursor and we just kind of hover over these different buttons, it'll tell us what each different button is going to do. The one we want is this F10 so the, that says um, change current item. All right, so the current humidity in this room is 59%. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna click on this white space if it wasn't already clicked on. And we're gonna type in 59 and then we're gonna come down here and again, hover over these buttons, see what they each say. In this situation, we wanna hit F3, that's gonna store the results. All right, so now you should see in your uh, screen, um, 59%, so you can see it right here, it's come in, it's now in the system. Again, I already did this for temperature and um, the barometric pressure, but you would do the exact same process. Click the cell and hit the button down there in order to edit the cell. So now that we've entered all those, we're gonna come down, we're going to hit this one, F3, for store changes and exit. And now we're ready to actually set up for flow calibration. All right, in order to do a flow calibration, you need a standardized syringe, something like this here. So this is a three liter syringe. Most of these systems are gonna come with one. Um, and it's literally a giant syringe. Here's the plunger. So it's gonna take in three liters of air and pump that three liters of air through this tube and into the system. So because we know how much is in it, we can then use that as a calibration. So I'm gonna bring this around real quick. This is where the mouth would go of the individual, so there's a little more to it that would be a mouthpiece and, or a face mask here. Um, so we're gonna connect the, uh, the exit side of this syringe to where the mouth would connect to the device and that's essentially we're giving the device uh, a f artificial lung that's always gonna give exactly three liters per breath. That's essentially how the system uh, takes this information and uses it to calibrate. 
So we're going to come into this. Now that we have this set up, we're going to come in. We're going to click on this F1 dialog. And you're going to see it's going to start prompting us. Right now, it's looking for us to do two pumps of air. This is just to make sure that the system is equi equilibrated as far as the pressure inside the system. So it gets all the stale air out that might be at a different air pressure and gets new air in. So it's telling us to then hit space. So we can either click this or we can just come down to the keyboard and actually hit the space button. All right, so now it's looking for a period of zero flow. All right, so we don't want to touch anything. We don't want to move the syringe at this point because anything that we're going to do is going to cause a little bit of air movement in the system and it's not going to be zero flow anymore. All right, so once it gets all the way across that little green bar, that is when the system has decided there has been zero flow for long enough that it has sort of a baseline for flow. All right, so we're past that now. And we see this window with all these yellow bars. And um, uh, what, what it really wants us to do now is we're going to start using this syringe to uh, plunge air into the system at set rates. All right, so you'll see once I start going here, so it takes a couple strokes for it to really see it. So it should start seeing it there. There you go. So you see that black line? That black line doesn't count. Once you're all the way out, so after that, um, we're going to see, instead of a black line, we're going to see a red line here. So I got a little carried away there. But that red line is now a line that actually counts for something. All right, so what I just did there is I, I put the syringe, uh, pushed the syringe in and got a really low flow rate. And I was trying to do that on purpose. I was trying to stay within that first sort of yellow range above the zero line. Now I'm going to try to do the same thing but I'm going to try to pull the syringe out at a very slow rate in order to stay within the yellow range uh, just below the zero line. All right, so you can see here that this little uh, box there went from yellow to green. That means that I did a good job and it accepted the um, calibration at that, uh, that rate. All right, so when I start pushing this, this in, you should see this yellow box here turn green as well. If it doesn't, that means it didn't accept it, and you need to do that uh, speed again. But I'm assume that I'm going to, that I got that speed right, and I'm going to now try to get my flows in this range here, and then it'll be inflow, oh, sorry, flowing out here and going back and forth. The goal is to get into each of those yellow bars going in or going out, depending if it's below or above the zero line. Um, and after that, we can move on to the next screen. All right, so you can see there it took me a couple extra tries because a couple of those uh, uh, inspirations and expirations didn't go as, uh, into the range as much as what the system wanted it to in order to use that as a calibration. All right, so but once you get them all, so you can, if you fail, that's okay. You just keep going and trying until you get them all. Um, but once you get them all, it's going to pump you in, uh, push you into this window here, and you're essentially going to do the same thing again, except for now instead of having those yellow bars that we're aiming for, we have these red lines here that are going to be essentially the same thing. So we're going to try to get as close to this top red, well, this bottom red line as possible, just above the zero, and then the same thing on this red line below the zero. Then we're going to try to go between the red lines above, between the red lines below, and then on the red lines, uh, the, the second set of red lines above and below as well. So we'll try that. Again, the, until you see color, a colored line starts to appear, nothing counts, so none of that counted. There's the black line that, doesn't also, that also doesn't count. So this, as I start going in, this is going to count now. So let me move this mouse. So I'm trying to stay right on that red line. And this takes a little bit of practice. The first time you do this, you're not going to be very good at it. And you're also going to mess up even after you've done it for a long time. It's not uncommon for the flow calibration not to be successful. That's okay. If that happens, you just do it again and again and again, and eventually you'll get a good trial. All right, so now I'm going to go between the red lines. All 
on the red on, on the outer red lines. And now um, I've done all those. I'm also going to do a, a round of flows outside of the red lines until it stops me. So just basically just going really fast on both of these. And there you go. So sometimes you're going to see this warning that's going to say that you're outside of the range. That's again, that happens. Then you just need to try again. So this sometimes takes three, four, even five or so uh, trials of going through both of these, um, these screens in order to get a good calibration. So I'm going to keep going and I'm eventually going to get a good calibration here. Okay, so that time it actually worked. So we don't have any warning sign that came up. Um, so if there's no news, there's good news with this system, all right? So it will only tell you if there's a problem. It won't tell you if there isn't a problem. However, you can always look here and see the difference between the inspired and expired air in these different trials, so the, the different strokes that we did. And they should all be pretty close to three. If they're not really close to three, it will give that error that we kept seeing there. So I had to do it three or four times at least there just to get it to work. Okay, so when you're all done with the flow calibration, the last thing you want to do is make sure you save it before you exit. So if you come down here, hover over these buttons, the one you're going to want is the one that says store calibration and exit. So you're just going to go ahead and click that and that's it. So flow calibration is done at that point. All right, so the flow calibration is done here. I'm going to make another video that's a follow up to this doing the gas calibration. Again, you have to do the flow calibration first before you can do the gas calibration because that's the only way of getting the humidity, the temperature, and the barometric pressure into the system. Otherwise, you're going to be doing the gas calibration using old values for those measurements. All right, so please come back to um, see the other video. I think it'll be also helpful to you. And if you have any questions about this, you can email me or you can put those comments below and I'll try to answer those. All right, thanks.